Um, we have a quorum and we will progress the meeting. Welcome to today's meeting of the Public Accounts Committee. Members, mobile phones must be set to airplane mode or turned off. It is not sufficient to put mobiles on silent mode as they continue to interfere with the Assembly recording. The session is being recorded in video and audio and can be accessed via online streaming either on the Assembly website or Democracy Live. Uh, agenda item one, apologies. I am aware of one apology from Mr O'Toole. I don't think there are any others. Chair, uh, Mr Boylan. Oh, right, OK. Mr Boylan as well. Thank you. Uh, agenda item two then, minutes of the 18th of February 2021, pages six to 11 of your pack. Uh, members, minutes of the 18th of February 2021 are in your pack, pages six to 11. Are members content? And if so, I will sign them as being accurate. Great. Agreed. Agreed. Okay, thank you. Declaration of members' interests, agenda item three. Members at each meeting, members are required to register relevant financial or other interests in the register of members' interests. Do any members have any interests they wish to declare this afternoon? Uh, Chair, uh, on legal aid, uh, I have family members involved in the legal profession. Okay. Any others? Okay. Uh, agenda item four, uh, matters arising. Uh, I'm not aware of any. Uh, so, can I at this stage ask broadcasting to bring in Mr. Kyle Bingham, the Northern Ireland Audit Office Assembly Support Officer? Um, Kyle, are you with us? If you can, can you hear and see us? And if you can just say a few words to let us know that we can hear you. Yes, Chair, I can hear you and see you. Okay, Thank afternoon. You. Thank you. Um, okay, so just uh, again, Kyle, you will be in spotlight. If you wish to speak, you need to unmute yourself. Um, are you content with that? Okay. Yes, Chair. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Agenda item five then is correspondence, pages fifteen to eighty-six of your pack. Um, and at this stage, I welcome Mr. Kieran Donnelly, CB, the Comptroller and Auditor General for Northern Ireland, and Mr. Rodney Allen, uh, Director of the Northern Ireland Audit Office. Members are referred to the memo dated the fifteenth of February in your pack, pages fifteen to seventy-nine from the Justice Committee regarding the development and implementation of statutory registration scheme for legal aid practitioners in Northern Ireland. This was a PAC recommendation in the PAC's Managing Legal Aid Report of 2017. The correspondence in your pack is quite substantial. The Justice Committee have asked the PAC for, uh, for any comments that we may wish to make on the Department's plans to uh, reinitiate this new scheme. The Justice Committee has asked for additional information on whether the uh, audit ambitions that will now be included in the scheme meets the requirements uh, of the Northern Ireland Audit Office and the Public Accounts Committee. The Department of Justice plans to take forward the project on a slightly different basis from what was previously envisaged, focusing on implementing a minimum viable model that can be built over time and with greater emphasis on quality. The <coughs> approach, according to the Department, will enable um, Earlier implementation, but does not. <coughs> sorry, but does scale back on the audit ambitions. Um, okay, so I'm just wondering if um, members have any comment on that, or if Mr. Donnelly, you had anything you want to say on it. Uh, well, first of all, I very much welcome this move to get a statutory registration scheme as a very important control. It's the type of thing that exists elsewhere. Uh, it's been a long time coming, so that, that's a good thing. Uh, we will want to look at this a little bit more closely just to see what the changes are, uh, whether there, there's been some modifications following engagement with the the legal profession. So we'll want to look at that quite carefully and we'll come back to the committee. Okay. Mark, anything you want to add? Um, just that it might be an idea uh, to write back to, um, well, first of all, the, the, the committee, uh, the Justice Committee, um, and also to you know, consider asking for an update 
from the um, <coughs> department on the recommendations in managing legal aid, um, and in particular that issue. Okay. Are members content with uh, that set out and explained by the Comptroller and Auditor General and the Clerk? Content? Great. Thank you. Members, you will recall that the committee wrote to the Department of Justice uh, on the 16th of June 2020 to ask for further update in 12 months' time on their recommendations out of the Managing Legal Aid Report of 2017, including this scheme. Whilst the Department said in their response that a lot of work had been done on a potential statutory scheme, progress had been slow. Legislation would also be required to implement the scheme. Um, and I'm just wondering, given that this issue has now come before the committee, um, we are a few months early, but I'm just wondering, should we take this opportunity to write to them now? Are members in agree? Great. Okay. That's great, thank you. Um, do you have any comments you want to add to, the, to what? Um, no, well, there are other recommendations in the in your report, so um, to get a general update would, would be a good thing anyway. Yeah, because this report predates this committee. Of course. So yep. you know, many of us uh, will, will not have seen it, mm -hmm. uh, so that would be useful from our perspective. But um, as soon as that can happen, that, that would be good and useful for us. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, members, I suggest we write to the Justice Committee acknowledging their correspondence of the 15th of February 2021 and then write to the Department of Justice to request an earlier update on the progress towards the implementation of recommendations arriving from the PAC's legal, managing legal aid report, given the issue has come to our attention. And in particular, I suggest that we ask for a fuller explanation as to why the new proposed scheme scales back on other ambitious ambitions and has. Uh, how this is beneficial to the original intention of the statutory regulation scheme and the PAC recommendation. Great. 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 Okay, thank you. Members, I refer you, refer you to correspondence dated the 14th of December 2020 in your pack at pages 86 to 80 to 86 from the Audit Committee to the Finance Minister uh, in response to draft budgets for 2021-22 for NIAO, uh, NIPSO, and NIAC. Um, members of the Audit Committee have agreed that the Executive's budget should make provision for the Assembly Commission having a resource Dell budget of um, sorry, £49,333, capital Dell budget of £1,684,000. The resource Dell uh, broken down as follows £45,833. Uh, on non ring fence Dell and £3,500 of ring fence Dell. The executive's budget should make provision for NIPSO having a resource Dell budget of £3,753 and capital Dell budget of £70,000. The resource Dell broken down is as follows £3,633 um, of non ring fenced Dell and £120,000 of ring fenced Dell, and the executive bud budget continues. The document should make provision for the Northern Ireland Audit Office having a resource Dell of £8,750 and capital Dell of £4,450. And a resource Dell broken down as follows £8,575 of ring, non ring fenced Dell and £175,000 of ring fenced Dell. You will recall that the Audit Committee requests a view of the Public Accounts Committee, which is reflected in this submission. You will recall that the PAC asked for clarification over the comparative increase in the budget for 2021-22 as opposed to the projected budget for the following two years. The CNAG addressed this query in correspondence, and at its meeting on the 5th of November 2020, the PAC indicated it was content with the explanation provided. The Audit Committee subsequently noted that the PAC's decision at their meeting on the 9th of December. Are members content to note? No. After all that, yep. thank you. Um, <clears throat> members, we will remain in open session and broadcasting. Can you bring in Mr. Patrick Barr, Director of the Audit Office, for this item? Mr. Barr, can you see and hear us? And if you just introduce yes, yourself, sir, can you can hear us. Thank you. We can hear you too. Thank you. Um, 
Members, I refer to correspondence dated the 18th of February 2021 at pages 88 to 90 of your pack from the Controller and Auditor General regarding correspondence he received on the 8th of February 2021 from Leanne Patterson, Acting Permanent Secretary, Department of Education, informing the CNAG that the Minister of Education, with the agreement of the Finance Minister, has provided a direction to take forward direct payments to families of all children in special schools who are entitled to free school meals for the period. Can I declare an interest as a governor of a special care school? Uh, for the period 25th of January to 12th of February during the COVID-19 restrictions. Uh, also in the pack, pages 91 to 95, are background papers that went to the Minister outlining the purpose of making direct payments to families of all children in special schools entitled to free school meals. In lieu of free school meals they would have received, uh, then they'd be in ten, ten, their attendance at school. The paper explains that payments have been made in lieu of free school meals during period of school closures during lockdown since the pandemic began last March and schools were forced to close to all pupils. The scheme ensures no family faces further financial hardship through no fault of their own as a result of the added costs of feeding their children while at home and learning remotely on a normal school day during the COVID closures of schools. Members, also in your pack, pages 96 to 101, is the relevant correspondence from the Minister of Education uh, and Finance dated the 2nd and 3rd of February, respectively, uh, directing payments to families of all children in special schools entitled to free school meals to a value of £138,955, pounds, sorry, with a potential maximum duplication cost of up to £38,232. Um, Mr Donnelly, have you any comments you wish to make on this? Uh, just to cut right through all of that, Chair, as, as why is there a direction on it? Um, it's really around that potential for duplication, um, somebody getting a direct payment and also getting free school meal. That's been quantified at 38,000. Um, it doesn't say anything in the correspondence, but I suspect uh, if you were trying to do it any other way, it would cost more to administer. So it, it, it you know, it does seem common sense. <coughs> yeah. So, uh, so I, I have nothing really. Okay. Further to add to it. Okay. Any members? Any comments? Everyone content? Chair. Uh, yes, Mr. Muir. Thank you. Uh, I'll just declare that I'm a member of the Board of Governors of Priory Integrated College in Hollywood, and um, I was going to say that. This is a stupid question, but there's no such thing as a stupid question. Um, in the uh, yeah, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Find our devices. Go ahead. No, you're okay. Uh, I'm going to try to pronounce this. It says in the document that there would be no <laughs> repercussiveness. Uh, and if, if the fishes could outline just a wee bit more in relation to what that is. Um, um, in terms, sorry, not it's not the repercussions I'm asking about. It's a duplication cost. Uh, it says in here, Department of Finance did not accept duplication cost to be seventy p, um, and it was about two point seventy. Just wanted to know a bit more about that duplication cost issue. Uh, I don't, all I do know about this is um, the DOF supply actually queried uh, the business case. And uh, I think it was their suggestion that there should be a direction on it, which is a bit unusual. So the challenge actually came from finance rather than than education on it. Um, I at this stage I, I can inquire further into the fine detail of it, but I, I wouldn't have that level of of information at this point, uh, Chair. Yeah. Thank you, Chair. The, the, the only reason I'm asking is I read through all the documentation and. To the repercussiveness, because I've got two issues highlighted in the same sheet of paper. Um, to me, that isn't the major issue. Uh, the issue to me in relation to, I read a stuff about a duplication cost, and I was reading it going, I don't understand what that is, and that's why I'm making the inquiry, because it's important to understand what we're sort of considering. Yeah. Uh, okay, sure. Uh, on, the, on the duplication, I think it's the, the, the possibility then that... Um, someone could get a, a free school meal at school but at the same time get a direct payment that, that's what that's about and um no, the quantification of that is it's not a huge amount of money 30 pounds uh i 
the documentation doesn't explain exactly what is meant by the re if I can get my mouth around it, the, the repercursive element. Um, and it's pr I can acquire it. It's whether it's to do with prison. If you make a move here, then uh, there might be other cases somewhere else. I can inquire into what exactly is meant by that. It's not that well explained in the, in the documentation. Okay. If, if, if I can add <clears throat> um, on the repercussiveness, just a, a bit more on that. Um, there's a concern that because the it's parental choice um, around concerns to keep the children off school, DOF are concerned that if there were other situations that gave parents concern, they decided to keep the children off school, might there be an expectation that they would get the free school, pay, uh, free school payment then as well, the direct payment? So that's why DOF had some concerns around it. Cheers. Um, the department, however, are happy that the power to do this is only under the coronavirus legislation, and therefore, when that legislation expired, that there wouldn't be um, a legal obligation to make the payments. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, <clears throat> members, before we go into closed session, you remember last week when we were having some technical difficulties and waiting for the linkage uh, with the uh, accounting officer, the department secretary, the Department of Infrastructure. Um, I asked some questions to Mr. Uh, Jeremy Logan, the, the Chief Executive of the DVA, around the issue of um, constituents who were receiving letters about MOTs and then unable to get slots to have those cars tested. I, I have received a number of emails this week from folk around that issue. Uh, and it does, I don't know whether any of you have, but I, I, I have also been contacted by other members the assembly to say that they have also uh, had members contact of the public contact them around that issue. Um, this is a direct consequence of the of the, the our, our uh, inquiry, and and I'm just thinking, uh, you know, given that this is something which um, is a direct consequence, that perhaps it might be an idea for us just to send a letter uh, to um, the chief executive around that issue, Mr. Beggs. You want to speak? Um. Periodically, even before the present difficulties, um, there would have been backlogs uh, with MOT centres and difficulty getting a timely timely test. Uh, I actually had made inquiries. I thought they'd stop sending out any notices at all, but uh, in a recent answer, I was advised that they send out, and it was five weeks before a test. But uh, Clearly, that would need to extend further if yes. there are no tests. I think we should be writing to them, asking that they extend further so that yes. those who That's are right. required to have a test have an ability to book one yeah. within the appropriate time frame. Funnily enough, I received three emails yesterday and I spoke to the constituents, all of whom were um, in their 30s, 40s or 50s, access to computers, telephones, computer literate, fully au fait with computers. I thought then turn to what happens if you're dealing with an older member of the community who does not have that uh, uh, access to computers and uh, be, be so um, proficient on computers. So I do think that that is something I, I, I think there needs to be a greater leniency. One of the, the constituents I spoke to, his date for his, and he started the search for a date as soon as he received his letter. His date was early March. He cannot get a, a, a slot until the 28th of March, uh, and it's in Armagh, and he lives in North Belfast. So the, the issue there is what happens to his insurance, what, legality, and all of that. This has caused huge, huge stress and concern and frustration to people. As I say, these are people who are active on computers all the time, computer literate, uh, and, 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 and au fait with the system. I just imagine what it would be like uh, for older people who would be so stressed and, and concerned about this. So I do think this is an issue we should we should raise because it directly comes out of one of our uh, inquiries, which is ongoing. Are members agree? Yep. Oh, Mr. Harvey, yes. Just we comment, Chair. I mean, it is a government requirement, so they should be able to provide the service. I mean, without saying so. Yeah. Happy for you to do that. That's very good. <coughs> yeah. And I think the other point that it. That I made last week was that some people have been driving for over a year without the car having been MOT. So a few weeks 
uh, more leeway would, would be something which would be eminently sensible. Members agreed? Agreed. Okay, thank you very much. Members, at this stage, we'll go into closed session to discuss the issues paper regarding the inquiry into the Driver and Vehicle Agency 2019-20. Uh, broadcasting, Mr Barr will leave the meeting at this point. Uh, and Broadcasting can I ask you to bring in Ms Colette Cain, Director, and Ms Suzanne Murphy, Audit Manager, Ms Caroline Laird, Auditor. Mr Kyle Bingham uh, is already in the meeting. Um, so Ms Cain, Ms Murphy and Ms Laird, can you see and hear us? Okay. Yes, Chair, I can hear you. Yes, Chair, I can see. Okay. Yes, Chair, thank you. Okay, good afternoon. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly.